watching today's winners and losers on Wall Street with our financial expert Rob Black and we're seeing a lot of pushback against Tesla from a lot of auto dealers. Yes, um, and maybe rightfully so. Oh, really? okay. It's a little misleading when you go to their website, you check every box on a $63,000 vehicle, it tends up to be $100,000, and they say your monthly payment's gonna be 114. That doesn't add up. Um, ultimately, the cheapest car made right now is $139, the Nissan Versa a month. But see, Tesla's throwing in like the tax credits you get, the lack of gasoline you're gonna be paying, the time that you save driving on the, uh, you know, the, the interstate and the, the HOV lanes. It's, it's fuzzy math, it's funny it's, math. I love it. it's like, well, your time's worth about $100 an hour and you won't be at the pump for an hour a month. So, oh, there's $100 in savings right there. With that, <laughs> said, with that said, the Car Dealers Association, I kind of wish they'd mind their own business because I like Tesla. Yeah, um, we do I, like it, Tesla. It's a fun story. Uh, but again, if car dealers are big employers in the United States, yes. I didn't really mean that. Don't send no, any didn't. nasty letters to me. If you do, it's bradnish at cron.com. Um, so, <laughs> <not> <laughs> but there's a lot of a lot of dealerships challenging. They have a certain hierarchy of how they operate in states, and they're really challenging Tesla how they directly market and sell to people. Yeah, um, it's a new business model, electric okay. cars versus um, gas-powered vehicles, and Elon Musk uh, and Musk we trust. <laughs> so he is doing something quite revolutionary. Keep in mind, we're only talking about 12,000 of vehicles delivered so far, which is a sliver of the 17 million autos sold this year. Mm. Yeah, pretty amazing. Uh, let's talk about Safeway, and this is a stock that's doubled from like 15 to over 30 in less than a year, and a pretty interesting strategy now going on with the board, a poison pill? Yeah, poison pill. Um, ultimately, when you talk Safeway, it's synonymous with going to the grocery store. In America, there's 1,600 stores located mostly in the western, midwestern, mid-Atlantic parts. They also own Gennardi's, they own Dominic's, they own Vaughn's. Um, basically, the stock's done great. It's been a cheap stock. There's been some activist investors inside of it, and they're trying to stop a takeover where maybe an activist would take it over, take it private, and then start cutting some jobs, closing some uh, less than promising stores. I own shares of this company. I sold it back in the mid 20s. Um, I bought a home run, and now to see it go even further, it's a little discouraging. But a poison pill is a way of making sure that if it is taken over, that it's done at a super premium. Okay. We have a lot of activist investors out there, a lot of it's sharks circling these days, it seems. It's the year of the activist investor. Certainly. Let's talk about these numbers that came out this morning okay. with the poverty level at 15%. What do, what do you make of the numbers coming out? It's 15%, yeah. that's one in seven people. Yeah. Right now there's 10 people in the studio and in theory one of us is in poverty. Um, $51,000 is the median income. This also tied into the story. If you make less than $23,400 as a family of four, you hit poverty. If you make less than 11,700 as an individual, you hit poverty. Um, the numbers really haven't declined that much in the past few years. There's no wage inflation. So it feels worse than it is. And again, these numbers are jokes by the Bay Area standards. 23,000 in the Bay Area. You're, you're way below poverty, you're homeless. Um, I think the poverty level in San, in, um, San Jose for a family of four is $77,000. Wow, incredible numbers. So We've been watching all the devastation in Colorado, all the flooding, and you, you really point out that a lot of people don't have flood insurance. They're just not covered for this, are they? Yeah, so a, a natural disaster is gonna turn into a financial disaster. I've considered flood insurance, even though I don't live in a flood zone, uh, because it can wipe out your home. When the federal government declares an emergency, you might get 60 cents on the dollar. Um, 10 to 25 percent of people in the, affected by the Colorado floods have flood insurance. Um, 10 to 25 percent homes, and you're seeing just thousands and thousands of homes get destroyed. So it's tragic in areas like New Orleans. It's more like 50 to 60 percent of people have flood insurance. Um, it's an insurance that we think we're never going to need. Um, I've needed it. Um, I had a bathroom kind of flood in one of the condos that I had in, in college, so. Wow, and um, regular insurance, you need flood insurance for something like that. And earthquake insurance, I mean, so many people I know just don't have it, it's, so, it's prohibitively expensive in a lot of cases. It is, insurance companies aren't stupid. Mm -hmm. They don't want to, you know, pay out trillions of dollars in times so, of um, If you owe a lot of money on your home, do you need earthquake insurance? Are you better off getting it when you have reached, let's say, over 50% equity in your house? Is that when it's better off having it? I always say insure what you can't afford to lose. Okay. Um, if you have 50% equity in a million dollar home, you probably can't afford to lose that. So yeah, at least consider it. Life insurance, you insure if you can't afford to lose your income for the next 20, 30 years. Same thing with disability insurance. You insure what you can't afford to lose, your ability to earn income. In flood insurance, if, the, if you have nothing in the house, why insure it? All right, thank you, Rob. Good advice. Cool. And you can catch all black segments of the Cron 4 Morning News as well as on our new Cron 4 app.